Welcome back to VIR, and we are getting ready to go for our Trans Am coverage live from VIR. Really excited because this is the penultimate round of Trans Am 2021. It's been a long, hard season for everybody involved, but as we get ready for Trans Am, let's go back to qualifying and see what happened to get the grid for our TA grid. Let's take a look at what happened in qualifying. Let's take a look at the highlights then of our TA qualifying. Problems for the breakfast racing team, no problems for Boris said in the challenger and he will be doing just that, making a challenge to win this race as he always does. Tommy Dreesey will be there, he's got a mathematical chance of beating Dyson but he needs Dyson to have problems. Dreesey getting a front row start in the Lucas Slickness car, number eight. And Dreesey always puts on a good show here at VIR expecting to do the same again. But it was all Dyson. Dyson never looked in doubt. It only took him three laps. And once he was up to speed, he was untouchable. One second faster than the next man, Tommy Dries. Yeah, I'll tell you what, it's kind of treacherous out there. And after this morning, I, I felt like I'd forgotten how to drive, but I think the track had just gotten so oiled down. Uh, we were back to form this afternoon. Uh, the Altwell Mustang, we, we rolled off the truck yesterday and it was fast. It was really, really quick and, and it was great to be able to put it all together here in qualifying. I'm delighted to be starting uh, this race from the front row and on pole. Uh, you know, this is a tough place to pass. So if we can get a good start tomorrow, uh, stay out front. That's the objective is just uh, try to bring home another one. Let's head down to Ben Sissel. Have we down on the pre-grid getting ready for our latest action from TA. Down to you, Ben. So, a lot of drama here at Virginia International Raceway. We're with pole sitter and point leader Chris Mason in that Altwell CBD Ford Mustang. And I just heard word from his crew that mathematically, if everything goes right, he could seal the championship here today. We have one more race at Circuit of the Americas in about a month. But mathematically, if everything goes right for CD Racing and Chris Dyson in this Altwell CBD car, he could clinch the championship. Now, I'll check you in this Lucas Slick Miss Chevrolet Camaro is Tommy Dreesey, who will do everything in his power to keep that from happening. So, this is Tommy Dreesey here. We've got Boris said, Ernie Francis Jr., Simon Gray, Ken Twaits, NTA. We got to get out of the way, Tony. I'm sitting next to you, Jonathan. Thank you. And Ben, as always, right in the thick of the action. But that is a little bit of drama I wasn't expecting from Chris Dyson. The cool, calm head of... Chris Dyson usually with no such problems. Let me introduce my cohort for the race as always, a man who's been already this season in TA and raced against Dyson and the rest of them, so knows exactly uh, what's going on out there and will be in action in TA2 where he is fighting with Matos and the boys to help uh, Matos and the team win another championship, let's hope. But of course, it's Adam Andretti and Adam, um, this is not what Chris Dyson needs this point in today have problems just before the pre -grid. No, absolutely not. No, these are definitely not things you want in your mind as a driver, but also Chris knows this is a team that's been together a very long time. Uh, they are truly a, a family in, in, within that team, not, not in the sense of sharing the blood, but they've known each other for so long. So the, tr the trust is there. Chris knows that it's the best stuff that he could ever have underneath them. They're poised to win this championship. I believe if he finishes sixth or better, he has this thing clinched. So that's where their focus is. They're not looking to race. I mean, we're always out there looking to race the race for wins. We are racers. That's what we're here to do. But Chris is a big picture guy. He's worked very hard to get this thing to a championship state. So you're going to see him really drive a focused championship focus race. Yeah, and the thing for the others like Tommy, I mean, Tommy's still mathematically in with a chance too if something were to go horribly wrong for Chris. But Boris said, really just going for victory. Likewise, Ernie Francis Jr. And they're all good peddlers around this VIR circuit. Very much so. You know, in 2019, uh, Boris said, 
you know, drove to a victory here that I, that I was here to watch. It's just an absolute dominant fashion. And uh, so, yeah, looking for him to be a, a spoiler up there for sure. Um, you know, Chris is out there on an island alone this weekend. It doesn't look like he's got a teammate out there with Guy or anything to come help him out. So, um, well, so the Masood car was here this weekend, but I just haven't seen him on the uh, No, order. I haven't either. So I, I, he's, he's out there on his own, and that, that's, uh, that's been, okay. been rare for him this year, but he's going to be fine. And But Tommy's out there really, you know, again, Tommy, I think, is, is he's, he knows he has to win. Uh, so Tommy's going to drive in that, that high uh, fashion that we're used to seeing him drive in. Um, I don't want to say desperate because I don't think he's, a, he's desperate in any, any way, shape, or form, but he's going to be taking more chances and he knows that he can take those chances, and he knows that he can maybe get Chris to check up because Chris is the one that has everything to lose here. On board with Simon Gregg here. It's a good shot getting warmed up, getting some temperature into the rear end, into the brakes, into the tires. You know he's going to want to attach himself right onto the back of that 98 of Ernie Francis Jr. and carry that way through the race here. The temperature in the cars here. You see Boris getting warmed up there in that Poncho Weaver special there. And the you got Ernie Francis Jr., the champ. You got Simon Gregg looking there. Had Kenny Twaits coming through Kerry Hit. Great, great gang through here. Well, if you didn't quite hear that, he was saying just trying to get up to temperature, just trying to get ready, and good luck to everyone, and thanks for tuning in. At this point, the stewards have asked us in the driver's meeting, no more scrubbing the tires. They want us to get two by two so that we can get all settled in. This is uh, tight to the roller coaster there. This is uh, fondly known as the roller coaster part of the track as they're circling through right now. They'll come down the hill here, and after they make these two lefts, you enter into hog pens, which is the final two rights onto the front straightaway. So a tight area but the stewards want us nice and bunched up and uh and to get us a good start here yeah no question and this is the time where the nerves start to jangle a little bit you've been there adam and you're going to be there this afternoon this is the tough time isn't it boris said ernie francis jr side by side it, it it's really tight and uh, david hoots has made a good job of making sure that no one kind of goes to green until till he's good and ready and uh, it, it makes it just a little bit more exciting and look how packed up they are for our TA. He certainly does make sure that we get good and packed up that we have a nice tight pack there so that it's a good race for the fans getting down into turn one. Well listen to that wonderful roar as Chris Dyson leads the field Tommy Dreesey will try to pounce Boris said on the inside good start also from Ernie Francis Jr. Nice braking from Boris said on the inside in the Challenger, and he's doing just that, making a challenge as Francis is forced to go wide as we go on board with Simon Gregg, just behind this group in the lead, heading towards NASCAR for the first time. Francis Jr. makes a move on Forrest said. Oh, and squeaks through there. Nice move. Ooh, Ernie is racy. He wanted that to move he wanted in turn one, and Boris was like, nope, I am sneaking in here. But uh, I tell you what, that was a bold, bold move, and it shows what kind of grits between Ernie's teeth right now today. I don't know if you'd have had a chance, you'd been busy, but Ernie Francis winning yesterday in his single-seater. So uh, he's got his tail up, has uh, Ernie, and he had disappointment in qualifying yesterday. Something wrong with the car, and we interviewed him, and he just he was almost nonplussed as to what possibly else could go wrong with his breathless racing car because he's had so many problems but on board with the leader Chris Dyson as he comes down towards the back of the field now and into Oak Tree for the first time. Chris is looking inspired and he's looking very comfortable behind the wheel and then back to Ernie absolutely uh, it's, uh, it's so happy to see what he's doing in the single seater that's something that was so new to him at the first of this year at Road Atlanta I talked to him a lot about the challenge that was ahead of him there he stepped up. He stepped up his workout regimen so that he could build the upper body strength he needs to drive those open wheel cars. And he's won races now on those things. And that is not easy to do, especially when he's got zero experience driving a car that is completely different from these TABs that were on board here with Tommy Dreesey and that Lucas Oil Slick Mist. Yeah, and, if, and these aren't inexperienced drivers he's up against in single seaters. These are honed uh, ex-carters who are on their way to Indy or F1. 
Absolutely. They're, they're, they're kids that that's all they've done is open wheel, single seater, you know, vehicles, you know, and Ernie, that's he's the opposite. All he's ever done is really sedan racing. So for him to, it just shows the caliber of racer he is, and he always does Trans Am. So proud. Boris said they're in the bright yellow Poncho Weaver Classic. Uh, settling into fourth place there, just going to kind of settle. And I, he's had that mantra in these TA races this year, Boris, is just to save the tires. Yeah. Well, save he did it last year here at VIR. He kind of held his powder and uh, yeah, came through at the end very well. We see Ernie getting really racy up there with uh, with Tommy Dreesey from the fantastic aerial shot that we're given. Going through uh, Snake right here on the approach to the uphill S's. This is one of the, uh, as a driver, one of your favorite places to be at in, in this area is the uphill S's. So fast, you're, you're, you're almost flat out in these heavy, fast, high horsepower cars and uh, Probably not with the heavy fuel load that they have going on right now, but definitely a, a great, great point of the track there. Yeah, Dreesy was trying to concentrate on catching Dre uh, on catching Dyson, but now he's got to, to think in his mirrors because all over him at the moment and heading on the back straight. Now, Adam, I'll put you in uh, Ernie's position now. How do you go about a pass down here, or is it simple? Well, he just started right there at Oak Bend. He got a much better run than Tommy uh, down the straightaway. Looks like Tommy's definitely handling well down the straightaway, so to speak. Uh, some good horsepower underneath the, the hood of that Camaro. But this approach is a really tricky passing zone here is because um, to be in the inside of the braking zone makes you in the outside of the right-hander here, as you can tell. Um, so it makes it a very tricky place. Really, honestly, what Ernie's going to set up, if I am if I know Ernie and the racing that I've done with him, he's probably going to set up for a good run out of hog pens here onto the front straightaway and a late braking maneuver there into turn one. Great start to this race then. Chris Dyson leads them over the strip. Beautiful sounding car as Tommy Dreesey still very much in pursuit and Ernie Francis now in third place is looking for a way to get on level turns if not past and he's keeping an eye on Dyson all three of these men mathematically with a chance to win but Dyson could did you say top six could could wrap him up it's yes. depending on where the others finish yes yeah I, I, I believe if he uh, gets a top six finish um, the math works in his favor and he walks out of here goes into Coda as the 2021 Trans Am champion. And I know this is something that CD Racing and Chris Dyson have personally invested a lot of time and energy into, and uh, this is gonna be a very emotional and exciting time for them. This race is getting, this battle is getting heated yeah. for the second place spot. Look at this. Chevrolet versus the Pony, and it's exactly as it should be, as it has been since 66. And right now, Dreesy's under massive pressure from Ernie Francis Jr., our seven-time Trans Am champion. I thought we were going to see something in the Oak Bend here. We might, we might, we might. Nope. Oh, he's going to mind his P's and Q's. And again, I just don't think Ernie is going to get a toe enough to get a run down this back straightaway. And, and, I, and Tommy is very good. Didn't quite catch what listening in on his radio as best we can look at that oh, oh the hood's about to come the off the hood's flapping up he's in trouble because if that flips up at the back straight i mean he's damned if he does damned if he doesn't he can't slow down on the back straight and you never know where he's going to hit a crosswind he's going to be in trouble again when he gets onto the straight again but uh, yeah. it's loose isn't it it looked like it looked like the the maybe some of the latches um, a latch or two made it come undone but um it certainly is lifting there in the front you can see Ugh. right there it's got so that right there is causing a very bad vibration in the car too. So it's Tommy, what Tommy is feeling is, is he, he's probably feeling like something's broken as well, right, yeah. um, because that bodywork's shaking around. You know, you got to remember all the aerodynamic pressure that's on these bodies. When those bodies move around, it moves around the whole race car. And yeah. You really kind of shake yourself, shake yourself loose. Simon Gregg racing for the Peter Gregg Foundation this year, a really worthy cause, and doing a great job so far trying to stay with this lead group but losing a little bit of ground here yeah absolutely he's um he's doing a fantastic job and uh you know all five of those scholarship recipient winners they're they're here um they're here at uh at the at the races this weekend and um you know they're just uh, a great group of kids and we've we've had the pleasure of working with with haley uh, on, on our race car and uh yeah, it's just been really fun to have them around, and, and uh, what a great way that he's honoring his father there with, with the Peter Gregg Foundation. Well, I hope somebody gets a picture for this, because I'd never thought in my career I'd be able to sit alongside an Unza and an Andretti. Welcome, <laughs> Al Unza. <laughs> Thank you. Great to be here. Um, what are you, what's your weekend been like? How's Chloe getting on? Chloe's been doing great. Uh, we had our best starting spot, third. 
in the last race and uh, the race before that it was she had the six quickest laps so so we, we we improved as the weekend went on unfortunately you know with with all the accidents and yeah. stuff you know that, that was a that was a tough race this morning but uh but with ernie we pulled it off with a win yesterday the second race so uh so yeah it's been a, a great weekend for future star racing and, and wings of wheels foundation try to give me an inkling because it's so exciting to be around ernie at this stage in his career he's won everything is possible to win in trans am where's he gonna go next where would you like to see him go next i know i, I keep trying to find out but they've got a lot of things <laughs> up for them they're very what? coy well well hey you know i love the indianapolis motor speedway so okay we'll leave for it me, that. it's the indy 500 is is the thing so uh Hopefully, you know, he's, he's definitely yeah, proven. Yeah, the family done well there, including yeah, yourself. Yeah, it was good. It was good. <laughs> he's definitely proven that he, whatever kind of car he gets in, yeah. he's fast. And so uh, any time you have a, a, a versatile driver like that, yeah. you know, they're thinking about it. They're using their head out there. And, and Ernie, you know, yesterday in the, in the second uh, race of, of the, the FR, he started eighth and went and passed them all to win the race yeah. so that was that was really really good well and it proves how good a driver he is when he's up against the best that america's got in fr and that's including international drivers mm -hmm. uh, who have got a great opportunity to go to japan if you win the title uh, and so these guys really are the next alex blows the next uh, pato awards yes and uh, yes. it really is showing just how good he is it's not until you actually take him out of trans am and maybe put him into that environment and he's taken to it I also consider Ernie, he's an old school racer, right? He can hop in anything and be quick. He works on his own stuff. His yep. head's in the game. Um, he's looking always. towards his future always. I mean, he's, he is an old school racer. He's physically fit. Oh, yeah. I mean, everything. He's, he's, he's the whole package. I mean, it, uh, he works well with our sponsors mm -hmm. and, and just uh, he's, he's all around. It's a good family. It Ernie, is. Ernie Sr. Yeah. and Monica, they, they're just a great family. Guys, just want to pause here. Here's the start again. And Al, you can uh, have a look at it because great start from um, uh, Chris Dyson. A, a thought from Tommy Dreesey, but good start also from Boris said, a man you'll know well. Yep. And Ernie, so all of them was forced out wide there. Yeah, yeah. Well, he, he had the inside. Boris had the inside going in there. And so, yeah, you're going to move him over a little bit. What a move you know? here, Ernie makes. <laughs> so Ernie yep. makes a dive there into turn three. That was okay. just such a beautiful move because he got that drive. Out there, I, I told my nephew Jarrett when he first came here in SRO, I said, listen, because he was starting on the outside, I said, there's grip on the outside in turn one. There is. And if you just yep. trust that, you can yep. you can drag him into turn three, through yep. turn two into turn three, and you got position then. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, also, I, I don't mind fit starting second here because you can even get a little bit of a jump on the start because there's a kink. Mm -hmm. You get a little jump because the kink brings you back even, so you're not mm -hmm. breaking any rules. Right. So that they know you're there and keep them squeezed to the inside. Absolutely. And then yeah. it makes that turn one nice and easy you for you. You proved how well you know these tracks because at Road America you did an outside move at four that I'd never seen in all the exit of four. I'd never seen anybody do. <laughs> yeah, we, uh, you, you want an element of surprise is the key in these things. Absolutely. <laughs> and, um, Absolutely. And if you're going somewhere where they're not expecting it, then you know, sometimes that can Especially when they're stacked up. Mm -hmm. You can make that. got to have a lane. Yeah. And, and so on. So My dad always said, go where they're not. That's exactly right. Yeah. Yep. I've got to ask a question for both of you. You've both been accomplished drivers in your own world. But how, I mean, do you enjoy working with youngsters? Or is it kind of, I love it. Okay, good. I some drivers don't yeah. because they get frustrated. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's not a family connection. You have necessarily no, no connection to a Chloe. For one, of those, one of those frustrated coaches is my dad. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I mean, when, well, when, that's when, family. When, when he was, I, well, when he was IRL driver coach there and, and uh, when, it, when it first began, dad would get so frustrated. These kids, they tell them to go out there and do it, and, and they just don't listen to me. They just go out and do their own thing. And, you know, I was never that way. I, if my dad said, you you jump. need to do this jump. I jumped. Yeah. I, I didn't I didn't question anything about anything he ever said. So um, because he was right, yeah. you know. Yeah. I mean, but he I've was, he been was right. there, done that. So, yeah. I've had this discussion with Adam. When you're part of a family that is so race orientated, it must be intimidating when you're not quite up to that level and you're trying to live after. You know, you're trying to live up to a legend. You know, <laughs> it it could be. I when when I first went, I went from go karts to a sprint car. 
Yeah. Is what it was. <laughs> so my pr- first professional car racing was a sprint car, and the press they came in and and, and uh, started asking me about my dad and comparing me to my dad and all that kind of stuff, and uh, and so my dad saw this, and. I remember that evening he pulled me and he goes, look, I don't care what you do for a living, whether it be lawyer, doctor, whatever, I want you to do whatever you want to. Just the only thing I ask is that you try your best. Yeah. And if you try yeah. your best, then the best will come to you. And once he said those words to me, I was I never felt any pressure whatsoever about going out there and doing it. And so. I just went out and tried the best that I could yeah, be, sure. and uh, and the best came too. I yeah. thought you and Michael did an f- awesome job in your careers making your own names for yourselves. You know, you were your yeah. own champions. You yeah. were your own winner. You, you, while you we're own, honoring yeah. our fathers. Absolutely. Right. I while, mean, at while the same time. carrying the legacy on. That's right, yeah. at the same time. And so, honestly, all we did was go out there and, and did what we loved doing right yeah that, that's i was truly ignore blessed. the pressure on everybody that's talking right. about you I and was, the name and all yep, that i was truly blessed with the talent and the fact that i loved racing yeah like you guys absolutely i gotta absolutely. i gotta bring in I, I love talking about all of this but <laughs> we gotta talk about what just happened with greasy i mean they literally did major surgery on the car it looks like they what they did was they pulled there's a there's an intake area yeah. into the air cleaner and they pulled that off so that that is gonna that's more like a ram air so he will suffer some horsepower but i think what they were getting they were experiencing an air packing in there and that was trying to lift the hood off yep and yep. so yep. they're looking for a solution to get him to the end of the race it may not be the best for the horsepower but it's going to get him to the end of this race and for this championship battle Yeah, he's I, 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 he's animated. In he's there, animated. Tommy. I'm just I'm <laughs> listening in on the radio. I'm not I putting it to too. air. <laughs> I'm not putting it on the air because he just sh- said in so many words, it's not as it, it's it's not as good as we thought it might be. In fact, it's worse. I think yeah, I, I, I think I think we know he's not having a pleasurable experience. Nah, yeah, and yeah, I think it's safe to sure. say. And and as sure. I, when you're in there, it's like we always talk about. It. It's a hot environment. It's a stressful environment. And uh, and so you do. You he, you hear the heat. You hear it all come through when when things just aren't going right. And and he's been watching this championship like slowly slip through his fingers uh, throughout and the last few. In races. actuality, it was a good thing that it was done under yellow, yeah. so he didn't lose a lot of time out there. He lost a lot of position, but it's still early in the race. He's got plenty of time to get back up through there. Ernie showing showing his stuff. He knows what he's doing here. He's showing showing uh, Chris that he's there and and that that uh, the future star racing Mustang right. is 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 here in the battle now. So um, this is going to be a great race here. You know, Ernie is at a point now. He has to win. This is a must win situation. For the yeah, absolutely. So, he's going to risk everything. Yep, and Chris yep. knows that. So I would look for Chris to be more of like the. Chris, he's back in again. Yeah. So this is a really frustrating weekend for frustrating. Tommy with the championship on the line and also with that sort of... Looks as though they're going to pull the hood off again, guys. So we'll keep an eye on what happens. Guys, I'm going to leave it to you to see what you see. You, you have a much better eye than I have. They're trying to tape it down here. We can see with some of that great 200 mile an hour tape that we like to use in this sport. But yeah, you can see the intake is missing off. There's usually a piece that would, a carbon fiber piece right off the front of that air box there that would go into the grill. Oh, they're going to leave it off. Ha! There, yep. There that's you your go. next option. That's your next option. Uh, otherwise, if that if that hood flies off, that's going to be... So guys, just talk to me about what this must feel like as a racing driver knowing you have no hood because the, all the aerodynamics are out the window naturally. Not, I wouldn't say all of it, but it definitely hurts. And it's gonna, it's gonna, he's gonna suffer at the end of the straightaways. But, uh, but all through these S's and stuff like that, you know, halfway up the long straightaways, he's gonna be competitive. So, yeah, he's Let, let's head down to Ben Sissel. So here I am at pit lane with Burton Team Racing owner Claudio Burton. You guys came in, you threw this air intake like it was nothing. You were ripping some parts off. This is a very important race for the points. What, what's the outcome here? Well, we, we, we did a lot of uh, testing a couple of weeks back on uh, aerodynamics. The rules have allowed quite a bit of advancement in terms of aerodynamics, and we try to take advantage of that. So there's a lot of little pieces that are on there that weren't really quite race proven yet, but tunnel proven, and uh, we're seeing a little bit of the consequence of that. Nice. So do you think what you've done now is going to get them back up to the top? Well, th- th- this is this is a band-aid with what I saw going down the straight, the oscillation of the front end. There's there's definitely something that 
is causing that, that problem. Well, you're hearing from the genius Claudio Burton right now. So when he says words like oscillation and things like that, I don't know if I can track it, but hopefully you guys up there in the booth can track it. <laughs> Thanks, Ben. Good stuff. And we've just heard on the radio that uh, Tommy's actually because we're going to keep going under safety. He may come in again, guys. Yeah, I think that's what he just said on the radio. Have some wrenches ready and uh, be prepared. He also said that that he felt he had the car to win today. Yeah, yeah, that's an, um, that's that's heartbreaking. You know, when you have that when you have that uh, feeling underneath your butt, and you know that it's kind of your day. I had one of those earlier this year in Nashville where we had just taken the lead and, and tossed a serpentine belt. So, oh. um, you know, the, the heartbreak, that's why we keep coming back to this sport, though. That's cause, right. Because it breaks our heart more than it warms it. <laughs> For sure. <laughs> For sure. You go home the, the loser much more than you do the victor. And, uh, you know, I've always said it's a losing business. It you is. Know? <laughs> I, I had over 300 IndyCar starts. I won 34 of them yeah. in my career. Yeah. Well, that was that, good. That's a losing business yeah. <laughs> in my mind. Right, Greasy right. is coming back in, and we are going to green, so he's going to lose out big time here. The real shame. Yeah, let's see what they do. He might want to try to get that hood back on there. Well, certainly been a busy day. They're going to get up underneath it now to see what's uh, if there's any pressure showing underneath. The splitter looks like it's on there strong and not having any kind of issues. We had the same thing in the TA2 car uh, earlier this weekend where we had a structural break in the nose. Oh, really? And, and okay. it, I mean, it causes a vibration like you wouldn't believe, and you think the whole thing's going to fall apart, and, and the car doesn't handle right because you're, you're taking the pressure in different areas yeah. away, and you're stalling the splitter. and. But uh, so it, it could be a true handful for those at home. That yeah, that hood could be a structural piece for that front front end right yeah. there because I saw him push on it and it's definitely moving with that with the hood being there. It it would have been solid. Yeah, and they they spring and the and the TA cars they'll they'll spring load the front ends so that if they go off track it doesn't destroy the splitter. Okay. So it kind of gives a little bit of give too. Um, so that, I think that's what was also moving the hood, that maybe um, one of those springs has failed or maybe one of those struts has failed as well in the front, though. But good eye there on, on, the, on the structural idea of that. Well, it's all work here at the Dreesey Camp, and there's been a lot of, after a really good start, poor old Tommy's been really in the wars, but it seems like uh, week in, week out, something is going on with the Burton team. Yeah, it's just been, uh, unfortunately, the last few races have just shown some struggles. You know, they had a tire failure at the top of the S's at, uh, at Watkins Glen and got away with one there because yeah. um, that could have been a really a destroyed race car, and it wasn't. And, um, so they've just had some rough luck, and, and it just seems to continue here today. And uh, as, as you heard from Claudio, I think, you know, they're trying really hard to win a championship. So they went and spent some time in the wind tunnel. They spent some time doing some aerodynamic testing, and I think they came here with, with uh, some things that they found and when put in the reality of, of a draft and, and tucked into some turbulence um, it might not have just worked out like like they had planned yeah that Adam I've got to get a, a quick line from you before we get the restart because we're about to go racing again but I'm I'm looking from Simon Gregg's point of view which you've been there many a time with Boris said ahead of you what's it like racing Boris said I would have thought tough times you think that Dodge looks wide <laughs> it's, it, it's three times wider than what it looks. Um, no, Bor Boris is a, a classic racer. You know, he's very difficult to, to pass. Uh, he doesn't want to be passed. None of us want to be so. And he's very good at making it wide. And uh, and he's he's one of the late of the late breakers, too. He's extremely savvy. Yes. Lots of experience and very, very talented man. Yep. And what would you be telling Ernie if you had the chance to be on the radio with him right now for this restart? You got go, 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 go. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> You've got nothing to lose. Uh, he Oh, and here comes Boris, though. It's a good restart from Boris in the Challenger in the day glow. Yellow. He comes yeah, alongside Ernie Francis, but Francis quite rightly gets into the middle of the line and makes sure he closes the door. Carry hit on the inside of Ken Twaits there, too, making a good battle back for fifth. Greasy still stuck in the pits, but the race continues, and Ernie Francis Jr. all over the back of... Chris Dyson, but Dyson trying to forget what's going on behind him and get on with his race and win this title. Driving the Dodge like I have for ECC, uh, you lick your chops for restarts because of the torque. Yeah. The torque of the Dodge, you just, you're, you're so pumped for restarts because that's mm. when you can really take advantage. And you saw what Boris, the jump, 
yes. uh, that he was able yeah. to get because that thing just has just such great drivable torque. And what about the straight line, Steve? You know, the, the horsepower advantage, I believe, goes to Ford. You know, the top line advantage uh, goes to Ford. I think arrow-wise especially, uh, the, the Mustang cuts through the air um, better. But Kerry hit over there at, at Advanced Composites, they do such a great job at equalizing these bodies. And that's why we've seen the splitter adjustments, the dive planes come into effect this year on the front end of the cars. It's all in an effort to make these as, you know, as close as possible. You know, that's, that's kind of the balance of, you know, the balance of performance that they have in the TA class. Being an open class that it is, they really work on the aero side, and Kerry does a fantastic job, him and his team over there at Advanced Composites, to make that happen for us. Well, the team discussing, that's Burton's team discussing what's happened to Tommy and trying to understand how he could get in this situation. It's still not looking good, though, Adam. You wouldn't be comfortable out there with it. No, it's vibrating in the front end. You can tell that's in the nose. Um, there's something structurally wrong up there in the nose, and that, that's causing his nightmare, unfortunately. And, that, and I'm telling you, it shakes your whole body. I can't, I mean, your, your eyes, you, you, can't, you can't hardly see. It's, it's, a, it's I feel it's for Tommy. It's a, tough, it's a tough situation he's in right there. Well, we've had plenty of drama here, and we've still got 51 minutes to go. We've also got the STT Championship. We'll keep you up to date with that as it gets underway in terms of competition anyway. It's already underway, as you can see, because that's the 55 of Milton Grant trying to make a move on the Audi just ahead of him. Lee Saunders back in the saddle, as it were, the former champion from last year. But what a battle this is. The Audi yeah. just squeezing through again. That was that move you just... Yeah, yeah. We talked about yep. earlier. Yeah. Nope. You can hold that outside. Yep. The old Harry Hyde. If you go to the outside, <laughs> it can hold. That's tr true. But yeah, great GT battle back there going on with the with the Audi and the Porsches. The Viper yep. uh, stretching its legs there. This is a great horsepower track for something like that Dodge Viper. That's I think for that's sure. why Lee Saunders has come back. He knows that the <laughs> the straight line speed of that Viper down that back straight is his huge advantage here. And if he can make it work through the corners, then he's really not going to have a problem. And you know, he's proving it. And for our yellow that we had out there, it was um, it was for Matt Budston. Matt Budston had crashed. Ah, right. Uh, so I, it was it was hard to get that information. We didn't really see what had gone on on the track, and uh, and we were you know two-time Indy 500 champion shows up in the booth here. Yeah, yeah. You know, we, <laughs> I, just, I distracted you. Yeah, guys. we're 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 going to get into talking about some you the know good some old fun days. stories. Yeah, absolutely. Well, Andretti, I, I, I've, got a, I've got one for you here. You hold the record as one of the only drivers to have uh, raced all three marks to victory. Yes. And yeah. Mike Skeen's got, uh, got, it, got his eye on doing the same. Yeah, and, and, and you know, and um, I hope we stop him. That's something, I that I some, I, I, that's something I like to have solely. But I can no. put some sugar in his carburetor <laughs> if it'll help. But, but no, I, it was, uh, I think it's good for Mike. I think, um, you know, it'll be good to see if, you know, I, I, for obvious personal reasons, uh, we got to do everything we can to stop him from winning in that Dodge because we need, you know, we need Rafa to to be in front of him. You know, we want Rafa to seal up the championship here today. We want to go in Dakota as uh, with Peterson Racing as 2021 TA2 champions. And, um, you know, Rafa is focused. I could tell you this morning he is incredibly focused. He is in his game. He is ready to go, and uh, and I think uh, we're going to have a great TA2 race. We got Connor, the youngster, Connor Zilich up there on oh, the pole. And what I mean, a he's, story. What a phenom he is, and uh, so excited to see how he races for the first time in a big full-body car. Are you, are you aware car. of this story, Al? I'm not. No. i, I got to tell you, think about this. This is a kid from Mooresville. Okay. Uh, down the road, North Carolina, 15 years of age. <laughs> 15. 15, okay. Been karting internationally. Uh, got a bit of help from Mike Skeen in terms of coaching. Okay. Uh, took the track record in his first outing yesterday. Yeah. Wow. Beating Mike yeah. Skeen and Rafa Matos. Wow. And this man here. Yeah. No, he's, he's a on phenom. pole. Yeah. Oh, wow. He's a, he, <laughs> that's a great job. He's a name that's to watch. A great he's job. a name to watch. You betcha. And uh, I told Connor this earlier in the weekend. Yeah. You know, I congratulate him on his win. Tommy, unfortunately. Coming out of the car here, and this is uh, this is heartbreaking. You can see it in his posture, right? Yeah. This is. Yeah. Hands are up. Lucas, <laughs> Lucas, oh, always, always the promoter. Absolutely. <laughs> Lucas Slick missed. And, he's, uh, a, he's a showman till the end, that's for sure. And what that means is with Dreesy out, you pretty much got to think that Dice has now got the title. Yeah, he needs to finish six to clinch this. And, and you know, so Tom, I, I tell you right now, Chris is sitting there with Ernie in his mirror. If, if Ernie does anything to show a nose, knowing Chris, it's not going to be an ego battle. He's no. going to go ahead and, and, and let, I believe, let Ernie um, 
let, let learning have it go. And uh, but yeah, this is a sad sight here, you know, for Tommy to be out of the car talking to the officials. But look, I mean, making the man laugh here. So this is <laughs> this is typical that's Tommy Dreese, and um, he'll come back and he'll come to Coda with just one thing in mind, and that's to go win a race in that's Coda. Right. And yeah. for for Lucas Oil, you know, Lucas Slick Mist and the and Forrest Lucas and his family, who's such great supporters of our sport. And, um, yeah, and I honestly, I would think that Chris is just being nice to the equipment, nice to the gearbox. Uh, if I can stay in front of Ernie, that's great. You know, <laughs> right. I mean, we, we we chase those race wins. Yes. And so, you know, he's thinking about winning the race, but also being good to his car and not taking any risks with that. If, in fact, Ernie does get close enough to uh, to make a move on, I'm sure it just let him go. Because I'm sure the team has let him know yeah. that... Dreesy is out. Now, what's happened here to Simon Gregg? He's Simon's like he's pulling off as well. It looks like it's broken, yeah. So this is a bad day for Burton Racing. Yeah, rough day for Burton Racing. Yeah, very rough. So Simon Gregg also out of this race and heading back to the pits. Did a great job of getting off track and making sure yeah. that we didn't, you know, lose. Yeah. 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 So really, Good. really, that's a professional right there. That's someone who's been doing this a long time. Well, like Simon you'll has like this story. Andretti did the same at Brainerd, but he didn't realize he'd <laughs> gone off track and ma managed to get himself on the drag strip in the middle of a drag oh. race. <laughs> in the middle of a drag Head race. Head on uh -oh. a live drag strip, yeah. Uh -oh. <laughs> well, that's that's the track's fault. They shouldn't have had that. <laughs> yeah. Hey, you're right. I, I, I stood by that. Your excuse is the same as mine. You know, I, 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 it made I, for great TV, I can assure you, because I spotted it immediately and went, what on earth? Andretti's on the track strip. <laughs> and to your point, Al, is, is um, you can watch the difference in the driving. Chris is not touching a curb, yeah. and Ernie is blasting over every one of them. Ernie is out there just trying to get and driving his heart out. Chris is like, yeah. this thing needs to finish, and well, I just need to come home. Yep. Let's head down to Ben Sissel. He's got Tommy Dreesey, and I'm sure Tom will still have a smile on his face. Well, this is heartbreaking. Tommy, we talked to Watkins Glen a few years ago when you couldn't race because of a health issue, and you were so close in the championship. You're so close in the championship now. What happened? Uh... We've just been fighting this uh, aerodynamic problem with the front end uh, at quite a few races, and we usually get it pretty good for the race. You know, we're always pushing the envelope, trying to do new aero stuff, you know, um, and uh, they work, they, you know, they worked till midnight last night uh, trying to fix it because it was a problem in, uh, in qualifying. You know, we did a low 45. That didn't even show our, I think, I don't know if we would have hit that, low, that, that, that 44 flat, but we were like a 44.3, and then we get in the high-speed stuff, and it just shook like crazy. And they worked on it. We thought for sure we had the problem solved. And, uh, yeah, I go out. We go out. We start the race. It was, oh, I mean, I almost got into Dyson at the oak tree because I could tell he was struggling, you know, with the, you know, cold tires, and I, I think we had the car today. You know, we all, everybody always says that when they're out, right? But I, I, I know we had the car today. I know we at least had a car to battle with Dyson. Well, Dreesy, hold on. Let me get a little bit awkward. Would you mind going up and joining them in the booth with two-time Indy 500 winner Alistair Jr. and give some of your commentary and your insight? Would that be okay? If, if, if uh, they get the car fixed, uh, I might have to okay. go back. Yeah. But yeah. if not, I'll be up Dude, there. thank Where you, Tommy. It? It's third floor, right up there. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Tommy. Thanks, Lucas Oil, my family at home, Burnt Racing. We all try the best we can. <laughs> Lucas Oil, my family at home, Lacey, Jagger, Elon, Mama, I love you. Nice. All right, back to you up in the booth, guys. <laughs> Tommy, Tommy's got, he hasn't got time to come on the booth again. He did that last time at Watkins Glen. But a great character, a great showman, and just great to have around, Tommy Treacy. And I have to say, the championship may be over, and I can officially say that now, that Dyson will take the championship because of that incident with Treacy. But, Adam, you have driven against him. Al, you've been watching it. Um, this is the best I've seen out of Tommy in a long time. Tommy was, is, is in his game, absolutely. Um, you know, we were joking the other day. I said he's a bit of a late bloomer. You know, mm -hmm. he's, he's definitely come into his own as a driver, and, and this is the best I've seen Tommy drive in his entire career. And uh, um, it, that, that's why you're really, you know, it's, it's a shame to see the result like this. But he's going to come back next year, and he's going to be again another one that everyone's going to have to watch out for. And there's going to be some, you know, there's rumors that I'm hearing throughout the paddock that we're going to have uh, uh, another, you know, famed chassis builder coming back to the Trans Am paddock and, and with 
more cars and more talent, and, and I think yeah. it's just going to make this series uh, that much more exciting to tune in for for 2022. Now, what do you think of Trans Am? Because it is a bit of an enigma. It's been around. You know all the names. All the greats have raced at Trans Am at some point. And even people like Boris said, who've done it all from sports car racing to NASCAR, you name it. Um, but it just keeps attracting good drivers. Yeah, and that, that just shows the growth of it. And it also shows the competitiveness of it. You know, yeah. any, any series at this level, you start getting in there, it's tough to run the top ten. Yeah. And so... That's, it's only, when people see this, they go, man, those cars look cool, they sound cool, they're fast, uh, I want to do it. Mm -hmm. And so that's really what what's happening here. And, and uh, you know, they, they, they've done a great job with it. Yes, it's got a lot of history oh, to it. Got to move. Oh, we oh. thought about it. Trying to use traffic, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah trying to yeah. use traffic. and. Uh, I, I, I could, Ernie's trying. Look at this. He's trying. I well, could, there's no question that Ernie wants to win this race for a different reason. Yes, every racer driver wants to win the race, but he's won a single-seater race yesterday. Could he win a stock car race today? Uh, wouldn't that make a, 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 a little a little mini record in its own way? So I don't think that's he would done. love that for his social media. Yeah, and, and he, yeah he would absolutely exactly. love that, and his fan base would love it. We would, you know, and, and the whole bit, and uh, and he could. I mean, he's. I, I, I could see Ernie going to Oak Tree, and he's like, oh, no, 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 I don't want to hit you, you know. And it was one of those right. little tight moments where he had that great run because of traffic. But, uh, you know, a little bit of a mistake from Chris there through uh, hog pens might give Ernie a run down the straightaway here into, into turn one because Ernie's been very good on the brakes in the one. It too, looks like Chris. Too much distance, it's yeah. Like, yeah, it looks like Chris pulls him down the straightaway. I've noticed, you know, that, that last lap. Ernie had a good run coming off of Oak Tree, and he also had a good run coming out of 17 there. And uh, Chris just pulls him down the straightaway. Yeah, no question. That's why they're, I'm sure the teams are looking at this going, how can we get our car down the straightaway quicker? Yeah. The aerodynamics program, we got to up the game to make that happen. Always pushing it. Always, always. That's what I love about racers. We're always finding the solution. Solution-based right. business. You made a, a comment about the Camaro. Uh, sorry, the uh, the challenge of being so good with tall uh, off the corners. What about what, what are what are the attributes, if you will, of the Mustang? What makes them, where's the Mustang good here? High end. They okay. they they make a lot of power right at the top, and and so these like the tracks like Watkins Glen, BIR. The, these last three here, Coda, where. Um, you know, Coda, Coda can lend itself to the Dodge. I want to race in the Dodge at, at Coda in, in 2019, and because you're, you're stop and go so much through the through what Adrian Newey calls the tiddly bits, right? You know, through that stadium section, and um, so that was really helpful for the Dodge. But where we would lose to Ernie in the Ford there at Coda was definitely down the straightaway. So um, you know, they got great top end in the Ford. The, the Chevy seems to be a really good all around package. Has great bottom end good top end and, and the Dodge really really smooth drivable torque and uh, Lee Saunders <laughs> you rim ride the Viper? yeah the, Vi the Viper is always uh, it looks an unwieldy car because of the size of the front of the car but obviously there's a big old engine up in the, in the <laughs> underneath it so in, you know it's got straight line speed you think it's unwieldy in the in the corners you know it took Dodge a long time to get the Viper to not be so evil um, you know it, it was okay. a venomous snake for a very long time but in the latter part of the generations of that car it not only became a great and formidable GT racer but a, a greater a, a, a road car with much better manners than the early generations of it so and then you have the classic Porsche you know the 911 which is which is obviously just one of the all-time great race cars the Audi R8 um, you know, again, from the GT style of things, that's a great race car to drive, I'm sure. Those are fun too, because, um, you know, air conditioned and. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you, you get all your, they got all your creature comforts, right? You got analog brakes, you got some, uh, you know, so, um, but it's a. Uh, Good stereo, yeah. Listen it's, to the radio. It's a, it's a great way, you know, to get your feet wet into, into pro racing in that GT class because it's a. Uh, it's not the maintenance of a race car, right? It's a maintenance more of a, of a road car, and, and it doesn't require, um, you know, the, the talent of personnel that you need to have, you know, to spin the wrenches on a true race car. Yeah, mm -hmm. no question. Al, I want to pick up on what you said. You do enjoy uh, working with the youngsters, and we got, we got off sidetracked a little bit, yeah. but yeah. I, I can also see Adam being really good at that kind of thing. But what are the, I mean, you know, you come in and it's intimidating. They find out who you are. They look you up on Google and they go, oh, my gosh. Um, and then they look at the family history. So that could be intimidating for a driver. But what, what are the first things that you 
fundamentally want, and you've got two drivers in Ernie, who's been there, done that, got the T-shirt. Right. That's right. And then you've got Chloe, who's who's a, who's a kid. She's 16, right. Right. Um, although very aggressive and very already independent. So how do you deal with that? You're really dealing with people. That well, racing is one thing, but you're dealing with two very different people. Yeah, with, with Ernie, it's more about reminding him about, you know, this could happen going into one on the start. You know, be, be ready for the, the, the starts, the restarts, all that kind of stuff because he's got so much experience. Yeah. So you, it's more about reminding him to be patient and, and not get overly excited and that sort of thing. With Chloe, it's much more about teaching the fundamentals of, of you know, get your line down. Get your line down, get your braking points set before. I know you want to go fast. But in order to go fast, you need to have your, your line proper, your braking points proper, you know, uh, and just build up to it. Be, again, right. take your steps of speed, small and incremental, and so that you don't overdrive the car because that's one thing that the kids do more than anything is overdrive the car. And so, uh, yeah, I mean, and, and then you just work. We, you just work with them. And... Uh, you know, at, at certain corners, they're having, you know, problems in, in a certain area or whatever, and then you just dissect that and take it apart, and and then help, try to help them with, uh, with, you know, you might want to enter here and exit here and so on, and and, uh, and then go out and try that. It's it's more about with the younger kids like with Chloe, is is going and testing, mm -hmm. and and, and yeah. getting away from the pressure of the race weekend and get out there. You know, on a Wednesday or something, and just practice, yeah. practice, practice. Here's another good story. Uh, Ken Thwaites, we're on board with him now as he comes towards uh, Oak Tree. Uh, but Ken Thwaites was the XGT champion from last year, and uh, he's now just taken to TA like a duck to water and really doing a good job. He took a sabbatical away from racing for a while, uh, but ever since he's uh, been in TA, uh, I don't know what your thoughts are, but. Oh. Um, um, <laughs> yeah, you know, he's, he's definitely stepped up and, and done a great job in the TA car. I know he's having a lot of fun in it. And you've you got to talk about him being like, he's he's Mr. All-Around Trans Am, right? You know what I mean? He goes from the, the Audi and the GT car. He goes from that to, um, you know, uh, the TA the TA car here and that he that he acquired from my boss, Doug Peterson. Yeah. And then, um, and then he goes uh, and he buys himself a TA2 car. And he runs Nashville, you know, for Franklin Road because the TA cars weren't going there. And he's having so much fun in the TA2 car. Yeah. And they're testing that and learning more about that. So we're going to see uh, we're going to see a lot of Ken Twaits um, around the Trans Am paddock, I believe, here in the future. And uh, what we don't want to see is this guy up here in the booth, Tommy. Tommy Dree. Ah, oh, Tommy. If it wasn't for bad luck, you wouldn't have any. Uh, it's been pretty tough this year. Uh, we've had some catastrophic failures. Uh, the one thing that's been bugging us is this arrow with the uh, with the nose just uh, flopping around, and, and uh, it happened in a, in a few races this year. Uh, we try, you know, they're always pushing to try to like figure out how to get better arrow on the cars, a little more downforce, and uh, whatever happened um, in qualifying, in practice, I kind of felt it. They looked at it, did some stuff to it, tightened it, whatever you got to do, and then uh, in qualifying. You know, we didn't show our speed, but it was just rattling a lot. So they stayed up till midnight last night fixing it, and it just got worse for the race. Uh, the start of the race was great. You know, we stayed ahead. of I thought Boris was for sure going to be right there. <laughs> uh, but uh, now we got, I got a great start, and I almost hit Dyson in the, in the where the oak tree used to be. So I said, wow, this car is working good. Uh, just, you know, uh, you know, could have, would have, should have. Uh, I think Dyson, you know, uh, and the whole team, they showed uh, – this year that uh, it's not just a, it's a it's a, it's the driver it's the preparation it's the team and these guys have just been rubbing on that car so uh, you know Burton Racing they work hard and uh, looks like Ernie is uh, go ahead I was gonna no I was say Tommy <laughs> while we're watching this keep an eye on see what you see because you've been out there with these guys all season long and uh, just I'm just intrigued to hear what you say about how Ernie and, and Chris are gonna take this on yeah uh, Chris is good on the, the high speed stuff Ernie is uh, Ernie always. He, Ernie's got this little talent that you have to have with Trans Am, and it's the uh, it's the little short, quickie bits rotating the car. Yeah. And when you see him in three, four, five, six combination, if you're four or five cars ahead of him, he's going to be right on your butt for the uh, the S's, and he will put his nose there. 
you know, if you look at Dyson on the on the high speed stuff, he'll he'll pull away about five car lengths, yeah, I've seen that. and then Ernie will get him back over there, and that's going to be a seesaw for him. That's going to be tough for Ernie to get by him. And is that just set up? Uh, <laughs> uh, I think it's a little bit of everything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can I can I can tell you that that he's right in that it, in our FR car. Ernie's really good at the low speed stuff, right. he, even in our car. Okay. And so uh, it, it's not. Yes, it is set up because you have to have the car to, to have the grip, but it's also how you attack that that, that left rights and, and the, the low speed, put the putting the power down, all that yeah. kind of stuff. Yeah. And, I think and, if you take, I think most you know, good drivers, most drivers that are up there, we can all do the high speed stuff. The arrow starts coming in, uh, you get that rhythm going, and you start flowing, and you get that rhythm. But when you get into that quickie bit stuff, there's a there's a talent there of being able to rotate that tire with your brakes and trailing and throttle on and that's setup and driver you know ernie's a little talent i watched him run that f race uh yesterday it started in eighth and you know i hate rooting for the guy because i compete against him <laughs> but 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 I, mean, I i i started whistling i started going crazy and somebody saw me they go tommy are you rooting for ernie no no <laughs> and i actually was because he's a he's a little talent those guys work so hard with uh, not much and so uh, this is a great race going on right now, and I'm sorry.